What's up ladies and gentlemen, this is Sal with another Project Zomboid video. This one's going to be over combat and some advanced zombie behavior. Uh, I do want to do a construction video, I'll probably try to get that one done today, but who knows, uh, we have to clear things out before we can do construction. Why is that? Because zombies hear pretty well, as it turns out in this game. Uh, they hear, in fact, most of the time better than they can see. So, we have, uh, in this particular instance of the game, we have our, uh, our good man Bill Murray, don't ask why he's named that. Um, Bill Murray, let me see, just to, just to go over things real quick here. Bill Murray took the traits of Axe Man, so he is a fire officer. Sadly, we don't have an axe right now. He's also, uh, ooh, also athletic, so he can run for a long distance if he has to uh, without getting tired. That can be a useful thing. Um, we might see that happen today, but really what we're worried about is how these zombies behave. So I'm going to press F2 to unpause it. And I'm going to be creeping around the inside of my house, trying not to make any noise. There should be an upstairs in this one. I actually, yeah, there we go. I'm trying to remember how this house was laid out. Uh, I would prefer to sleep upstairs with sheets on all my windows, just because that way, not only can zombies not hear me. Oh, hello. That's an open sheet. That is, that is no good. Okay. Not only can zombies not hear me up here. But uh, the likelihood that they break into my house and then somehow also find their way upstairs, very, very low. So, we got carpentry for intermediates. That's actually an important thing. Um, all these carpentry for beginner, intermediate, advanced. We'll talk about those later, but that's a, a neat thing to have. Anyway, we're going to go to sleep because we're tired. And being very tired means your awareness is reduced, which means it's harder for you to see zombies. Uh, your, your field of vision, basically, the cone narrows around you. And also your hearing radius is reduced. So when something's sneaking up behind you, you don't hear it until it is way too late. All right, so we're going to sleep. And we're sleeping upstairs in a window, you know, a windowless room, essentially. Close all the curtains. Um, the likelihood that zombies are going to break up to us is pretty low in my experience, unless there's just a whole ton of zombies hanging around. It's now 620. Uh, it tends to get light enough outside to go out at about 730. 720, 730. So, uh, we're going to walk downstairs and check for any zomboids that might have broken into the house overnight. Typically they shouldn't. As long as they don't see me, they don't have that much in the way of a reason to break in. However, there are a couple reasons they might do so. For example, if, if sounds go off outside or if I'm running around inside the house making sounds, um, they're going to start trying to look for a way in, including busting down windows and doors, and we really don't want that. Okay, so time to eat, and then we're going to walk outside and uh, murder us some zombies, clearing the way for construction. I've got an empty pop bottle here. Oh, we should talk about that too real quick, but um, let's go ahead and have something to eat. Where is my foodstuffs? Here we go. Uh, it's morning, obviously I want cereal. And there goes all the cereal in the entire game. No, it's it's not an easy thing to find for some reason. Uh, we're going to fill the empty pop bottle. It's going to turn into a water bottle. And as long as I have it uh, held in this particular uh, inventory slot, so in the main slot, right, the, the cardboard thing, that I will drink out of automatically. I don't have to do anything about it. Um, he just automatically drinks out of the water bottle. Until it's empty, of course, and then uh, he's going to have to come back and get some, some stuff later. So it's 7.30. I actually don't want to fight with this frying pan. And I'm going to tell you why. If you look at the stats on... Oh, shoot. If you look at the stats on the hammer, uh, and you're going to have to go to the wiki to do this sometimes, or you can pull up the game's code if you want to, um, it's better in every way. It's better in terms of damage. It's the same in terms of a lot of other stuff. Um, it's better in terms of damaging doors. So we're going to go ahead and equip the hammer as our primary... And we're just going to drop this thing back here so we're not over-encumbered. Being encumbered is bad. I have a lollipop today, uh, in case we need that. I don't think I'll need the orange soda. I have water. And I've got a... Well, let's see. Is this, is this good for hunger? It is good for hunger. So, um, well, I've got a lot of orange soda. I didn't realize that. Okay, screw it. We are going out to kill zombies. Zomboids. Means we got to find some. And then we're going to show you how to treat them effectively. You tend to want to take them on one at a time. Um, no matter what weapon you're using, if you find more than five or six, you really need to be careful with that amount. Uh, and right now, since I have the hammer, uh, I'm going to be careful with just about anything. We've got one right here. 
There's a couple ways we can deal with this, but it looks like it has actually seen us from that distance, so we are going to go ahead and just deal with it like this. You notice I'm, I'm not just spamming that mouse button. You really have to time your swings so you get the maximum damage out of it. We go ahead and kill that one, and we're going to start looking for some more. There's a couple things you can do to find zombies. One of them is to shout. Uh, if you press Q, you'll shout something. Which always strikes me a little bit funny because even when you're like extreme panic mood, he'll just shout something like, uh, hey you! It's, uh, it's a little weird. This guy, no, okay, I thought he had a really long distance, uh, vision radius, but no, he was just moving around. Let's go ahead and call him down here, though. And we'll see who else shows up. Now, I'm, I'm spinning myself around with my mouse, kind of doing a, a radar effect. I really, really do not want to be ambushed while I'm fighting one of these zombies. Oh shit. So you'll notice what I did there when I realized the swing didn't go through. I'm going to check my health now. Oh, I got slight damage. That's not good. Um, when I noticed that that swing didn't go through, I tried to run away before the zombie's animation finished. When zombies finish that animation, it means it's going to hit you somehow. It could be a punch. It could be a scratch. It could be a bite. Um, you'll know that it is a bite or a scratch because if it's infected, it'll start getting extremely painful, and then you'll start getting sick. Right now, it looks like there's no pain. Also, there is no bleeding. I am okay. Therefore, it was just a punch. So once you get back to okay, it means you have no damage left. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm safe for now. That looks kind of like a crawler, but it's not attacking me, so I guess we're okay. Um, so far, we've only found one zombie at a time. This is good. It's been a very fast zombie. I don't like those. But I'm just going to keep walking down this street until I can find some others. And really, I kind of want to clear uh, just the general radius around my house. I don't want to deal with zombies that are showing up and causing problems while I'm constructing, because constructing makes a lot of noise. And I'm, I'm still walking around trying to generally keep myself uh, combat ready, so I'm holding control this whole time. If I know there's just no zombies for miles around, I'll start walking like this. It's, uh, it's just easier. I don't think it really has any stat effects. It might make you just a little bit more exhausted to be walking around in sneak mode constantly. But I think we're okay. What really exhausts you, though, is running. You'll notice I'm, I'm very rarely ever running because you don't want to get to a fight and be out of breath. It just means you have a lot less strength to work with uh, and you're more likely to die. Plus, running around is uh, one of the quickest ways to exhaust you and turn you into a uh, tired person as well. So we got a zombie over there. This time around, let's just try sneaking up on him. I'm going to keep sneaking like this. Now, he may hear me at some point here as I'm sneaking. And he does. Oop. Oh, so you see he missed his uh, attack there because I managed to run away fast enough. Good reflexes are important in this game. i got to get my, uh, my hammer swings right this time. There we go. Hammer has a very low radius. I'm actually used to fighting with things that have a higher radius, like a baseball bat uh, or an axe. It lets the zombies... It doesn't let them get anywhere near as close as they do with this freaking hammer. It's, uh, the hammer's really annoying. So we're going to try and sneak up on this one. We pretty much managed to do it. There we go. And so I'm, I'm going to keep swinging once they're on the ground until I hear that, that wonderfully satisfying bone-crunching sound. Let's try and find a few more here. Um, generally, you're kind of seeing how combat goes. You can lead zombies around if you want to with sound. Uh, they will see you after a while and start coming after you. Hmm. And once you're in a situation like this where there just really aren't that many zombies around, you can start to run. Being careful to check around you every so often to make sure that running didn't attract any attention because running makes a lot of noise. You're pounding your feet in the ground. All right, Courtman Medical. I think I have been up here already on this particular save. I haven't shown it to you yet, but uh, equipment Medical is a useful place to go get a bunch of pills. That's cool. Ugh. Excuse me, guys. I think I might be sick. And I think I've pretty much cleared this area out of zombies to the point where I can probably do construction tomorrow. Uh, maybe just check for one or two and be perfectly happy. But let's double check everything. We could we could still have some migrating hordes here and here and there. And I think actually I started this game um, short enough ago that zombies might still be spawning. That would not be good. Uh, let's, oh, hello. Come on, buddy. There we go. 
That was satisfying. Yeah, you can't teabag in this game. I really wish you could. Um, so zombies spawn from day one through day five. That's kind of how this game works. Uh, so if you if this is your first time on a particular world, which, by the way, if you die, you can reload the same world with a new character. There we go. If you reload the same world with a new character, everything about it is the same. This, the places where you left any stuff are the same. It's uh, a neat little save feature so that you can come back and have another extra life to try everything again. The only thing that's not the same, of course, is that you have to rework all of your skills. And uh, you have to do it without there being water and power sometimes if those have already gone off. So it can turn it into a bit of a harder game unless you've made yourself some nice safe spots at some point. But... Uh, so far, still no hordes. We have not done any advanced combat yet. And I really would like to have an axe for it, but I just haven't been able to do a bunch of home invasions to find one. So I'm not too worried. Baseball bats are actually what you're going to mostly find. Um, probably the best tools you'll find in houses. You'll find a lot of baseball bats. Golf clubs are okay, but they make you uh, they make you tired. And they don't always, as I found out, knock zombies down. That really hacks me off. I need to be able to knock zombies down. Okay, we've got three of them over here. I'm going to go ahead and um, call them dirty names. Two of them have come over, one of them didn't here, that's fine. And you notice there's a big speed differential between these two, so I'm gonna let the fast one come at me first. Knock her down. And if that had taken more than a couple of hits and this one had gotten closer, I just would have let her get back up, keep backing up, until uh, there's a differential between the two again on speed. I, I wanna make sure that they get far enough away from each other, I'm effectively dealing with only one at a time. And I'm still, like, I'm in unexplored territory right now. I'm still kind of doing the whole uh, Doppler radar thing. So while she's down, I kind of have a feeling of how long it takes to kill a zombie. So I'm occasionally turning, turning around just to make sure nothing is coming after me. Uh, we're going to get back home here in just a minute. Sounds like somebody just got a message. What me. All right. You can tell your weapon's quality, by the way, uh, up in that top left side at a glance. You can see the star on that hammer. The star tells you uh, how much quality there is left. Once that star starts to lose pieces of itself, and you'll see what happens. Like, it, it just basically, it's like you could fill in the star with color. Uh, you start slowly draining that color from the top of the star as if it were, like, water or something coming out of a glass. Um, and you'll see the, the condition of your weapon deteriorate. What's up, bitch? I really don't want your Girl Scout cookies right now. I already have like five boxes. There we go. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got a backup weapon, especially when you're using something like a baseball bat, because those things tend to deteriorate pretty fast. Uh, right now it is, of course, getting to be about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 1600. And I usually like to get home by 6, by 1800, that is. If I am not home by 1800... Uh, then I, I start running the risk of it getting dark, and when it gets dark, zombies get more plentiful. They tend to spawn overnight uh, if you're still in the early phases of the game, or if you're in a cell that's a, that's a certain area, a certain radius that has more zombies than have been generated by your um, more zombies than have been generated by the the game at the time. So the game might have a ref a record of like a thousand zombies in your cell, but it can only generate you know a few dozen or a few hundred um, to display on your screen at any given time. So what that's going to mean is if you kill a bunch over the day, a few more are going to spawn in your cell until you've depleted the stock. Yes, you can deplete the stock. This is the best news in the game, and, and it's one reason why I, I keep playing it. Um, you can totally deplete the number of zombies in your game. We're going to go ahead and have a lollipop. I really want a lollipop right now. Um, <laughs> oh, wonderful. Refill that water bottle, too. Because we know we've used that over the day. Um, yes, you can totally deplete the amount of zombies in the game. Not possible, or not, you know, not likely that you're going to do it anytime soon. Close that door. But you can do it. Uh, I've had games where I've killed a couple hundred. I've seen records of games where people have killed thousands. And by the time you've killed thousands, you're not going to find a lot of zombies left anywhere in your version of the town. You may have to run to the other town. So if you started in Muldraw, you can run all the way down the highway to West Point, for example. You just check the map. But 
and that map is online. I, I forget what the URL is. I might include it down in the uh, in the description. Regardless, this video I hope has been pretty entertaining and informative. Um, tomorrow this is going to be more about construction, but let's go ahead and go to sleep, and I will talk to you guys later.